So I was just sitting back with my beautiful girlfriend Tristan watching the new Cody Ko video and I decided to make this video because I've actually had quite a few questions about kombucha lately. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at what's going on in the YouTube community or in pop culture or in politics or whatever it is and try to see what lessons we can learn from them and apply them to our everyday life. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you haven't yet, make sure you follow me on social media on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. Um, based on some of my most recent videos about opioid withdrawal and suboxone tapers and everything like that, I've received a lot of questions. I'm trying to interact with all of you in the comments. Sometimes I can't keep up. So follow me on social media, DM me, whatever it is, tweet at me, whatever you gotta do if you have questions. I'll try to answer them or I will point you in the right direction and provide you with some resources. All right, so yeah, anyways. Cody Ko's brand new video is about the kombucha king, okay? And kombucha, for those of you who don't know, it is fermented, it's like a combination of fermented yeast and bacteria, all right? And those of you who haven't met me yet, I am a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. Next month on June 23rd, I will be celebrating seven years of sobriety. No alcohol, no drugs, all right? And I don't know what happened, like based on the video that Cody Ko did, kombucha has been around for a while, but like recently, like I would say in the last two to three months, it's been coming up a lot more. Like people have been asking me about it. I've been seeing it online and everything like that. So I wanna share why I won't drink kombucha and how it could possibly kill a guy like me. And before I kind of dive into kombucha a little bit more, I wanna share two quick stories about my experience as a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. So the first thing is, I am somebody who had many relapses, many, many relapses, all right? I, I just did a live stream yesterday about, you know, addiction and everything. And my last relapse, almost seven years ago, no, almost eight years ago, because it lasted for about a year and a half, it started out with one Vicodin pill, one five milligram Vicodin pill, okay? And I suffer from a mental obsession and physical craving. That is what we alcoholics and drug addicts struggle with, okay? Once I have one, my body reacts in a different way and I immediately start craving more. I need more and the problem is, is that there's never enough. So that one Vicodin pill showed me that once I put one of anything inside my body that alters my mind like that, I don't stop and I never know when I will stop, all right? Something that I hear other people in recovery saying like, like, I know I have another relapse in me, but I don't know if I have another recovery in me. And that is so damn true. Like, if I were to relapse at this point, like, I don't know if I would ever come back from it, all right? So, based on my own experience, one Vicodin pill kicked off about a year and a half long relapse. Now, the second thing, when I actually got sober about seven years ago, I will never forget. Like, there's so many stories I heard where I was like, oh my God, right? And I was in a 12-step meeting and I heard this guy who came back in and he just came back from a relapse. By the way, pro tip, if you wanna learn how to stay clean, listen to people who have relapsed before. So basically what this guy shared about was he was at a friend's wedding, okay? And he wasn't paying attention. So when they were going around doing the toast and pouring champagne, he wasn't paying attention. So they poured the champagne, he took a drink, and next thing you know, like he realized, oh my God, I just drank champagne. And his brain immediately said, well, you already had some, you might as well have the rest, right? So he went over to the open bar and that kicked off a relapse for him. So just by him not paying attention and just having a sip of champagne, his brain, his attic brain started justifying drinking more. And I'm sitting there with just a few months sober, I'm like, dang. Right? So I am very careful about my recovery because seven years ago I had a 10% chance of living. I was dying based on my addiction. So my first run in with kombucha, I was actually at a um, influencer marketing convention here in Las Vegas uh, that I was invited to. And I, I went out there and I was hanging out with some other influencers and everything like that. And they started saying like, oh, do you want some kombucha? Do you want some kombucha? And everybody's like, yeah, let me have some kombucha, right? And they have like different flavors and people are like, oh, that's gross and everything. And as somebody in recovery, I have to protect this thing, all right? So if there is a drink or a substance that I am not familiar with, I have to ask, all right? Now, 
there are a lot of people who are like kind of like in the closet about their recovery and if you are that's totally cool like i'm not gonna lie to you and say there's no stigma out there because there is but when i finally came out about my addiction recovery it's helped me protect my recovery even more so when they were offering kombucha to everybody the people in the group even though a few of them i just met they knew i was in recovery so when i asked it wasn't like a weird situation i was like i was like what kind of drink is that is that alcohol or what is it right like i love coffee like I'm thinking like, oh, maybe it's like some kind of coffee or something. And I was like, is there alcohol in that? And they explained to me like, yeah, it's fermented, you know, yeast and bacteria. So it does have some alcohol content. So when they were all handing out some kombucha, I was like, no, no thanks. You see what I mean? So for anybody like me who's in recovery, it is important that we know what people are drinking and what's being offered to us. Because like I said, my last relapse started off with one pill. I've met other people where their relapse started off with one sip or one drink. You see what I mean? So kombucha, it is not like a strong alcoholic beverage, okay? It contains, I believe, I'll put a screenshot up here. I just uh, looked it up. It contains, I believe, anywhere from about 0.5% to about 2% alcohol, all right? So if you just have one, you're not gonna get drunk, all right? And just to give you like kind of perspective on that, like I believe Bud Light, it has like, you know, 4% alcohol. So you gotta drink quite a few beers to get drunk. But here's the thing, like I am an alcoholic, so, I won't just have one and say, okay, that didn't get me drunk. What I will do is I will go find more or I will find something stronger. Like my relapses show this to me. I don't just have one. I, I am not the type of person who just likes getting a little bit of a buzz. Like I love getting messed up. And that is why I have to stay completely abstinent. Because like I said, this thing will kill me. It will kill me. My son will no longer have a father. My girlfriend Tristan will no longer have a boyfriend. My parents will no longer have a son. My friends will no longer have a friend because I do not stop. Like I've met some people in recovery where they still drink like non-alcoholic beer and everybody's recovery is their own thing. But I know, I know for a fact that I am the type of alcoholic where I will not stop. So I don't even play that game. I don't even mess around with it a little bit, no matter what the alcohol content is because I have seen what just one little taste can do to me. You know what I mean? Like another quick story is when I first got sober and it's important to know that my uh, main drink of choice was rum. I love Bacardi. I was actually thinking about getting a Bacardi tattoo back in the day. Good thing I did it. Now, <laughs> now that I'm a sober alcoholic, but anyways, rum was my, um, my drink of choice. So when I first got sober, it was my grandmother's birthday and we went out to dinner with her and like um, my, my mom's side of the family is uh, Sicilian and we ended up having tiramisu. And I was like, okay, and like my, my mom's in recovery, I have other family members in recovery and tiramisu is typically and traditionally made with rum. So they were talking about how this was just rum flavoring, it wasn't actual rum. So I'm like, okay, I can't get drunk off this, obviously it's just cake and cooking's a whole different thing I can make a different video about it if you would like let me know down in the comments below because alcohol does get cooked out and all that stuff but I'm not gonna go into all that science here but anyways I had that tiramisu and the taste of rum just the taste of it my brain started going haywire all right like I was maybe a month or two months sober and this was just flavoring and for hours all I could do was think about drinking all right so being somebody who's in recovery from addiction we have a variety of different triggers okay triggers can be tastes smells but also situations feelings and everything like that so i have had to learn how to walk my life in recovery by avoiding these certain things you see what i mean like to be honest there are still drinks that i stay away from because i mix them with rum like even though I'm almost seven years sober, I still get that taste. Like my brain, the synapses in my brain still sh fire off and give me that craving, right? So for example, like um, Diet Coke, I used to drink rum and Diet Coke all the time. Um, when I needed an energy boost, I used to mix it with Fruit Punch rock stars. Those are like, those are beverages that I, you know, I've had them since I've been sober, but anytime I have, it's crazy. Like if you really slow down and get mindful, you notice how your body and your mind starts craving this thing. So 
I wanted to make this video because I actually had a friend asked me maybe just a week or two ago and she's not in recovery but she asked me she said Chris like you're sober like would you ever drink kombucha are you allowed to like I can't speak for anybody else's recovery but what I explained to her is what I'm explaining to all of you for me that is a very slippery dangerous slope that can lead to me dying that I'm not even gonna play around with all right so for me an addict like me I am the real deal addict and alcoholic so the only way that I am staying on this path and living this amazing life that I have today is through complete abstinence all right my life is so amazing now i don't even need to mess with that stuff to to test the waters and see what it'll do for me all right but if you've ever had kombucha or any experience with it let me know let's have a conversation down in the comments all right but anyways that's all i got for this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and while you're at it don't forget to follow me on instagram and twitter at the rewired soul i love interacting with you answering your questions and all that stuff all right and before i let you go a huge huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on patreon you're all amazing and if you'd like to support what i'm doing here and get some other perks and benefits click or tap right there all right thanks again so so much for watching i'll see you next time